I want my kids to have the experience of praise and worship. Now, that might sound odd. It might sound like, what? What are you talking about? And yet, I pray the Liturgy of the Hours every morning. And what's the invitatory psalm? You know, oh, Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. praise. And then what's the Psalm 95? Come, let us sing to the Lord. And what's the word, sister? Shout with joy to the rock. Shout who with saves joy us. to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with what? Praise, praise and, thanksgiving. and thanksgiving. And sing what? Joyful songs to him. Joyful <laughs> songs to the Lord. Let's go, right? I mean, this is something the church prays every single day. Every bishop, every priest, every deacon, every religious sister, brother, uh, third order folks who are committed to the Liturgy of the Hours, and anyone else who is committed to the divine office, you're going to bump up against in the very opening words of the opening psalm that is the standard that you pray, it's saying, shout, sing, joyful, worship, praise. And we talk about praise as if it's weird and it's not Catholic and it's it's foreign and it's not something that we should seek to foster. Oh, I'm kind of stirred up, Sister Mary Eucharista. I am too, you know, and Tom, I am so delighted. I have friends who have left the Catholic church and gone to Bible churches because they say to me, the word comes alive. And then when they're ready to hear it, I'll always kind of toss in, oh, you know, I I hear you. This is so important. I I just wish for your sake that you could also have the Eucharistic bread of life so that you will have both sides of this. And I do wish that there were some way that we wouldn't have to go to another church to get that glorious experience of having the word of God put into song. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Life Center, but I've been invited down many times to, with my pastor Joe, to come and um, not only be with his people, but also to know his staff better. And in fact, I'm giving a sermon on uh, Ju July 30th for Heights Church, which is one of the churches that uh, the Life Center planted. And I try to keep a relationship with people who are interested in knowing what is it that Catholics do anyway? Can we hear it from a Catholic? And when I tell them, as I did when I, I, I mentioned to the Nazarene uh, pastors when they all came on retreat one time, they had me give them a retreat and I explained the Mass and they said, we have never heard of the mass being explained like that. And, and then they all look at each other and kind of chuckled like, well, we never had Sister Eucharista explaining the mass to us before. <laughs> but I said, yeah, look at my name. I mean, you're going to get the story here. And, um, you know, I can go around to all your seminaries if you want and explain what the mass is. Maybe this and they all laughed and clapped me on the shoulder. Sister, sister. Now let's not get carried away. <laughs> but, you know, I just think that there is so much people don't know and we allow ourselves to be, um, to kind of enable a type of sterile, um, soundless or very monotone understanding of the word. And that's not, the word is living. Of course, chant will bring it forward. Of course, the mass will add the fire and light. And most especially it will. And our hymns will. But for some reason, that praise and worship gets in there and stirs us in a way that nothing else can. And come on, Tom, nothing can stir us but the Holy Spirit. Part of my awakening to faith as a young adult was through the Catholic Charismatic Renewal and this grace of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And one of the fruits is this longing for and willingness to express faith through praise and worship, through full-throated praise and worship. And that has been such a gift in my own life of faith. But when I bump up against folks who struggle with the renewal and this particular gift that is connected to the renewal, it's not only part of the renewal, but it would be that, oh, it's emotionalism, right? It's emotionalism. And, and so anything that moves us into a place where we would be expressive of our own faith all of a sudden we get a little nervous around that. And uh, I was listening to Father John Ricardo and he used an example that I also love to use, which is 
go to your favorite football game. And when your team scores in an amazing way as some touchdown, everyone gently just claps their hands in the stands politely, right? No, no, there is a boisterous, full-throated, almost out of control praise of what just happened on the field, an acknowledgement of it. And no one thinks it's ad- abnormal or weird. In fact, it would be abnormal and weird if you just sat there as a as a home team fan, saw the home team do something that was st- stupendous and amazing, and you just sat there and responded with a flat face and demeanor. No, no, you're the one that's missing the proper response to what has just shown up. And I think that I love that Father Ricardo, you know, way of talking about it, that, you know what, there's, we need to recover. We need to recover what the liturgy of the hours is telling us, what our tradition is telling us in the scriptures, what we see in different streams of the tradition in different moments in history. And this is a moment when praise and worship is being used by God as an amazing gift to fan and to flame the faith of many.